All right. So the next subnet for this slash 27 will be 168.12 and 32. We are adding the block size. 192.168.12.64. Keep on adding 32 to the fourth object. Twelve ninety six. All these are slash twenty seven. I'm not going to see the stop. And the last one for the slash twenty six. The possible subnets are always remember that the first subnet is just like the mother. Then the next subnet. We are adding 64 to the last octet. All right, let's end here. So what are we going to do with all these subnets? We are now coming to select. We are now coming to select. So looking at our topology, For the slash 30s, we have two slash 30s. And they all need subnet IDs. All these slash 30s, they all need subnet IDs. This is one subnet over here. And it needs a network ID. Every network needs a network ID. You remember that rule? So we have. All these subnets here for a slash 30. Sorry. So we are going to pick this first subnet here and assign it to this first slash 30. So the subnet for this here will be 192. One six eight twelve to zero slash thirty. Every slash thirty network will have just two valid IP addresses, isn't it? Every slash thirty network has two valid IP addresses. So the first IP will be twelve dot one. Sorry, 12.1, and that will be assigned to this interface of the router. Yeah, 12.1, this interface. And the other IP is 12.2 for this interface of router B. So this network now has IP address. Once we have used this zero here, no zero can be used again. No zero can be used again. Take note. Otherwise, there's going to be an overlap. No zero. So it cancels out every zero. Take note. Very important step. Now we still have another slash 30 here. That also needs a subnet ID. So we are going to pick the next subnet ID. That is slash dot four to be used between router B and router C. So the next subnet will be given to this network, 12.4 slash 30. So we have used this dot four here. It's a network ID. The available IP addresses will be dot five and dot six. We can assign dot five to this interface of the router and dot six here. You have your IPs for this network. Now, supposing there was to be any dot four here on this network, supposing there was any dot four on this network, good. 
So we don't have any but four. Yeah, we would have cancelled it out. Now we are done. We are going to reserve this ones here for the future use. But take note of something. Now we come to the slash 29. For the slash 29, that is the six we said. This network here. Oh, sorry. This network. It also needs a network ID. And it's a slash 29. So we are going to pick it from this range. We can't pick the dot zero because it's, it's been used up. So the next available is the dot eight. So our subnet for this network will be 192.168.12.8 slash 29. In this case, the valid IP addresses will be, we'll start from 12.9, 12.10. So we get to 12.14. That will give us 14 IP addresses. But fine, we need six IPs. That'll be okay. We keep the rest for future expansion. Now, if there was any eight here, that eight would be nullified. Unfortunately, we don't have any other dot eight. But once you have used the dot eight here, you can never use any dot eight anywhere again on the network. Then we come to the slash 27, this network here. Under the slash 27, the next available is 32. And that has not been used anywhere on the network, so we can feel free to use it. So in this network, our network ID will be 192.168.12.32 slash 27. In this case, valid IP addresses will start from 12.33, 12.34, 34. And so on. So we get to 12.62. 12.63 is the broadcast for this network. Ah, I wrote it in place of the slash 26. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, I, I wrote it in place of the slash 26. Sorry, that is the slash 27 over here. Okay. Please open your eyes. Though. If I, if I go wrong, just draw my attention. So slash 26, 32 will be used here. Sorry. 192.168.12.32 slash 27 for this network. For the valid IP addresses, as I said earlier, on will start from 12.33.34. So you get to dot 62. So 63 will be the broadcast. Then you come to the slash 26 network over here. The next available subnet is 64 because 64 hasn't been used anywhere on the network. So our subnet for this network is 192.168.12.32. Slash 26. So valid IP addresses, as you all know from group 5, will start from 12 to 65 to 66. You count on and on and on. So you get to 12 to 126. 12 to 127 is the broadcast. For this network, every network has a broadcast ID. You see, that is variable length of network. Very, very easy steps. Uh, the whole house is quiet, too, sir. Sorry? The whole house is quiet. Uh, it's normal. It's normal. <laughs> it's 
will be noisy. Uh -huh. Let's let's take another example. Uh -huh. Mark, did you want to answer your question? Not really. You know, I missed after the immediately after you restored the, this very session. So, just after the um, slide twenty six, the last one, the last bit from the rest, I I have not been able to follow. Don't worry, we are going to solve more example. Okay. okay but then I see, I see the sixty four appearing twice, and that's like twenty seven and slide. When is it appearing again? When is it appearing again? And that, and that slash 27 and then and that slash um, 26. Yes, we, we are writing the possible subnets down. Okay, we are writing all the possible subnets down. Yeah, I get your point. But you see, um, you were using one of them as the uh, um, network, uh, the IP for the network, right? No. I chose, like you, the, I chose the yeah. IP2 for the slash 27 card on the board. Supposing yes. there, there was another slash 27, I will choose this one, okay? In that case, this 64 will be nullified. Okay. Yes. Let's so, solve an example. You get Nat, the standard. Yes? Nat, yeah, I'll get a question for you. So what if, for instance, um, let's say, um, um, the users increase. Maybe there's an unexpected. Um, 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 uh, maybe the the one one of the branches they need an expansion, an unexpected expansion, and maybe the the 19 users increases to let's say 30. What 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 happens then? All right. So in those cases, if you are planning your network as a network administrator, you should make room for expansion. That is the ideal situation. You should make you shouldn't be so strict on your numbers. You should make room for expansion. However, if you make room for expansion and still the new expansion comes and the number doesn't fit your plan that you, you've made already, you have to redesign your network. Wow. Yeah, you have to redesign your network. Okay. So let's take another class C. Now we have this class C. 192. One nine two one six eight. 11.0 slash 24. And we want it variably submitted on this network topology. This point to point network. And a point to point network. And another point to point network. We know that every point to point network will have two IP addresses. This is a point to point network. So, two users. This is also another point to point network. So two users, and this is also another point-to-point -point network, two users. Right, for this network here, according to our plan, we need 23 users. If you say users, you are talking about IP addresses. Over here, we need 18 Users. We need 54 users. And here, we need 
72 uses variable length subnet mask. We are going to use this to subnet for all these different uses. All right. So we write now our equation. Network bit plus post bit should give us 32. Let's call this equation one. We also know that two raised to the power h minus two. will give us the number of users or the number of valid IP addresses. What is the first step? The first step is to look for the end value or the subnet mask for all of them, all the networks. We are going to look for the end value for all of them. Once we get the value for n, that will be the same as the subnet mask. What I mean is, if anybody write this IP address for you, 172.16.3.4 and slash 29. Is that not the subnet mask? That is a subnet mask. And if someone asks you, what is the meaning of this slash 29? Won't you tell the person that slash 29 means the number of network bits? Yes. So N is the same as the subnet mask. It's the point that you have to know. Before we continue. So taking the first subnet, so you are going to put 23 in place of users. Are we there? Yes. All right. Yes. So look, still looking for H. Two goes over there to add up. So 23 plus 2 will give us 25. Now let's do our try and error. Okay, 2 raised to the power 4 is 16. It is less than 25. So we move to the next integer. Right? 2 raised to the power 5 is 32. We'll choose 32. So h is equal to 5. If h is equal to 5, we are coming to replace h here. We look for n. So n plus 5 is equal to 32, which is 2. n is equal to 32 minus 5. And n is equal to 27. 27. So for this slash 23, or this 23 you said, we should use a subnet mask of slash 27. Now we come to the next subnet. 80 users. This subnet here. We apply the same step. 18. 2h is equal to 20 because the two coming add up to the 18. Now h will be equal to 5, isn't it? Yes. yes. If it's 4, 2 raised to the power 4 is 16 and it's less than 20. So we go to the next integer, 5. Coming to equation 1, 32. So n is equal to 32 minus 5. n is equal to 7, 27, sorry. So for the 18 uses, we need a slash 27. Let me rewrite this. Great space. Slash 27. That is 18 uses. Was it, was it 28 uses here? Did I write 28 uses initially? 
Hello. No, 23. 23, thank you. Yeah, 23. 23. 23. Okay, so the 18 users will also have S slash 27. Now we move on to the 54 users. Those who don't like math, sorry, eh? the course is not about math. Okay, we'll finish after this. We'll talk about math again, okay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 2 raised to the power h minus 2 is equal to 54. 2h is equal to 56. See, I hear. So h. If 2 raised to the power 5 will give us 32, then we can choose this. We move to the next integer, 2 raised to the power 6 will give us 64. That's acceptable. So our h will equal to 6. If h is equal to 6, we are going to substitute h here. So n plus 6 should give us 32. Where n is equal to 32 and 6, n is equal to 26. So for the 54 users, we need a slash 26. The steps are so easy. Take it one at a time. So, so easy. Now, 72 users. So 2 raised to the power h minus 2 is equal to 72, equation 2. 2h is equal to 72 plus 2. That is 74. I'll try an error again. 2 raised to the power 6 will give us 64. Less than 74. So we go to the next integer. 7. That'll give us 128. So we we'll choose 7. Our h should be 7. If h is equal to 7, n plus 7 is equal to 32. n is equal to 32 and a 7. And n is equal to 25. Over here, we need a slash 25. Now we come to the two uses. For the two uses, equation two will bring two here, based on the uses. So two raised to the power h is equal to four. This is straightforward, h is equal to two. So if h is equal to two, n plus 2 is equal to 32 from equation 1, where n is equal to 30. So for the two users, we need a slash. 30 for all of them. Slash 30 and a slash 30. That's the first step. Once we are done with this step, we are going to write all the slash locations in their descending order, starting from slash 30, then slash 27. We have two slash 27, there's no need to repeat it again. But we also have spray slash 30. There's no need to repeat, just write slash 30 for all of them. <laughs> then slash 26 and slash 25. What next? We need to write their block sizes. Slash 30. What is the block size for slash 30? Can tell us. 
Block cipher six. It's a uh, six. Sixteen. We borrow six, isn't it? Six. Yeah, yeah six. From a slash print, so we borrow six. So let's count six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The block size is four. What about slash twenty-seven? How many bits do we have to borrow? Three. From a slash twenty-four. Yes, three. Are we sure? Yes, three. All right, beautiful. Three. So one, two, and three. Thirty-two. So the block size for slash twenty-seven is thirty-two. Slash twenty-six. How many bits do we have to borrow? Two. Two. One. Two, so two, the block two, size two. Is one and two. Fifty-four. What about 25? Five. One. One. So 128, just one. That is a block size. Since my childhood, I've never known how to write eight very well. My eights are not nice at all. <laughs> so. Then after this, we are going to use this block size to write down the possible Subnets, having in mind that this is their mother. Okay, so writing down the subnets will be the increment in the fourth object with their block size to put it for the slash 30. The first possible subnet is 192168 11.0. It's always .0. So the subsequent ones are going to be increased by the block size 11.4 in fact you are not supposed to write so many of them you just have to look at the number of sublets that you need. In this case, for the slash 30, we need only three. One, two, three. So you don't need to continue. Just end there. How about the slash 27? For this block size, so all these guys are slash 30. For the slash 27, the first suitable subnet is still like the mother. Uh, next one, we are going to add 32 to the fourth octet. The next subnet increases by the block size. The next one still increases by the block size. Let's end it here. For the slash 26, the first suitable subnet is always like mommy. So the 64. So 128. If we still want to continue, that 64 plus 128 will give us. One? One and two. Nine, two. Let's end it here. Okay. All these are slash 26. All these are slash 27. And the slash 25. One, nine, two, one, six, eight. Eleven to zero. For the block size of 128. What to be the next one? 128 plus 128. 256. So should we write 256 here? No. Why? It should be 255. 255. No. 128 plus 128 is 256. You are right. Why should it be 255? Yeah, it has to be 256. 
Or two fifty six. But on our chat, on our chat, uh, notation is two five five. Five. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we can't have five five five. So we can have another subnet. We can't have another subnet. You understand? Because the maximum okay. number you can have in an octet is two five five. Yes. Two five five. It ends there. All right, now, so now, now we are coming to do our selection. We are coming to pick. You see, it's not difficult at all. Very, 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 very uh, good. We are coming to pick. How many slash 30 do we have? Three. So we pick this first slash 30 and assign it to this point-to-point -point network here. So we have 192.168.11.0. So the valid IP addresses will be dot one and dot two. Dot one will be assigned to this interface on the router, and dot two here we are done. Once you have chosen dot zero, we can choose any other dot zero again. So that nullifies. This dot zero here, this dot zero, and that. We still have another slash 30 over here. So we pick the next available. That is 192, 168, 11.4 slash 30. The available subnets are the five. Available IP addresses, sorry, the five and the six. So the five for this interface on the router and the six. Suppose if we have another dot four, that will be nullified. Unfortunately, there's no dot four. The next dot eight will be given to this subnet. 192, 168, 11 dot eight slash 30. Available like this are dot nine and dot 10. Dot nine for this interface and dot 10 for that interface of the router. Now we come to the slash 27. Because this zero has been nullified, the next available is this 32. That will be given to the first slash 27 network, 168.11.32. So valid IP addresses, Starts from 11.33 to 34 to 35, you keep on counting. So you get to 0.62. 63 will be the broadcast for the 32 network. Then that brings you to the next subnet. Over here, no IP address can be 32. You can't assign 32 because it's a network IP. All what you are seeing here are network IDs. All of them, they are network IDs. From which you can derive IP addresses. So this 64 will be give, given to this network 11.64. Valid IP addresses starts from 65, 66, and so on, so you get to the 94. You get to the 94. The 95 will be the broadcast for this network. Then we are done for the slash 27. Because we have chosen 64 here, this 64 is not valid. It's not valid. We can't use it. Now, we come to the slide 26. The next available is the 128. The next available is the 128 for the slash 26. So we have 192, 168, 11.128. Valid IP addresses will start from 129, 130, and so on. 128 is canceled. So, slash 25 they didn't get some. <laughs> slash 25 they didn't get any subnet. In fact, um, I used 
I created a question out of my memory. Okay, I created it out of my memory. That is why we didn't get any subnet for just last 25. But if this was to be a real life scenario, this was to be a real life scenario, then um, administrators shouldn't choose a class B, a class C for that. They shouldn't choose a class C. They should start from a class B. Okay, you have to submit with a class B, as in 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Okay. 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Over here, you have a wide range of subnets that you can that can be derived from it. So if you are faced with this in practical life, then the best thing is to go for a class B. Please, any question? Hello, are you there? Lady and gentlemen. Let me see your faces. Today the class has been so quiet. Francis, you keep on going and coming, but why? Your link is not good, eh? Very bad. Your link is so bad. Very bad. Then you have to watch the video. Uh, Today the class has been so quiet. <laughs> Should we talk more examples? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Let's, let's, let's solve class B here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, we'll solve class B. Okay. Not me, it's the video I'm waiting for. <laughs> yeah, waiting for the video because you came in late. Yes. All right, no problem. So I'm, I'm pausing here to start a new video, okay? Let me just join me.